Hey everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography, and today I'm going to be going over the new Flat Wizard and Nina version 3.1, what changed, and how to operate it quickly and efficiently. So if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button. I don't want you to miss out on any upcoming content. Now let's jump on in and learn about Nina's new Flat Wizard. If you've been using Nina and recently updated to Nina version 3.1, HF1. There's a couple of differences here and the biggest difference that I noticed is with Nina's Flat Wizard. If you're new and starting off with Nina 3.1 HF1, we're going to be going through the Flat Wizard and how to take your flat frames. Now, personally, I feel that the new version of Flat Wizard is not quite as user friendly as it used to be. But that's okay because I'm going to show you a trick to get you to the right answer very quickly. And I hope that this can help someone who might be struggling a little bit. Now, what you want to do is make sure that all of the equipment that you're going to be using is connected. Uh, personally, I like to take my flat frames uh, during my session that I'm going to be taking my light frames in. And if you take your flat frames at a different time than your light frames, there's uh, something to be aware of here we're gonna get into in just a moment. At minimum, you're gonna want your camera connected and your mount. If you're using a flat panel, you're gonna wanna go ahead and connect your flat panel as well. Now, the reason that I like to image my flat frames at the same time as my light frames is right here. You want to make sure that your rotation matches between your flat frames and your light frames. Flat frames are there to calibrate out vignetting as well as dust and any imperfections within your optical train. As you rotate your camera, you're not only orientating your deep sky object, but you're also orientating your dust and imperfections within your optical train. So if the rotation does not match between your flat frames and your light frames, that dust and imperfections will be in two different locations within the frame and not correctly calibrate out. It can actually cause more issues. So make sure that your rotation matches between your flat frames and light frames. The other thing to keep in mind here, if you're using a filter wheel, you wanna make sure that you connect your filter wheel so you can easily get to the filter that you're gonna be using as you do need to make sure to use the same filter between your flat frames and your light frames. If you're not using a filter wheel and you're using a filter drawer, make sure that the filter that you're going to be using for your light frames or did use for your light frames is inserted and ready to go for your flat frames. That's very important. Now, let's go into options imaging and we're going to choose where we want to put our flat frames in. Personally, I like to put them in the same folder as my light frames. Uh, for example, I have M101, I have the date, and I also have the filter that I'm using, night one. This is where I would put my folder for my flat frames and my dark flat frames so that they're there and ready to go uh, for use with my light frames in pre-processing. And the way you choose the folder, which however you want to have it set up, is you click on these little three dots. And this is one of the differences between the old version of Nina and the new version. The old version just had a little drop down menu that you would choose your folder. Now it actually brings up your file explorer and you would just navigate to the folder that you want to save your flats in. In this case, I'm going to choose YouTube flats and hit select and now our folder is selected. Now, if we go into the flat wizard, we have a lot of controls here. We can choose how many flats to take. I like to take 50 and our dark flats to take. 
I, again, I like to take 50 and make sure that you have this set for however many you want to take. A difference here between the old version of Flat Wizard and the current version, Nina no longer calls your dark flats dark flats. It now just labels it as darks. And that's okay. Dark flats are essentially dark frames. They're just set to match your flat frames. So when you have your folder and it saves, I'll show you an example here. Let me go into... So we have our light frames for IC5070, the Oxygen 3 filter. We have our flat frames and we can see our filter Oxygen 3 was used, our temperature, and I used four seconds. If we come into here, we see dark. We no longer see dark flat or flat dark. We see dark. We have our filter, we have our temperature, and we have our same exposure time as our flat frames. This can be a little bit confusing because when you take your dark frames, you'll now have two folders that say dark. So what I like to do from here is rename to dark flats. This way I know just at a quick glance, these dark frames match my flat frames. And then when you go into WBPP to pre-process, it'll all be organized through your exposure time anyway. Again, dark flats are, are uh, dark frames. They just match your flat frames. So just for confusion, one tip that I have is rename to dark flats. So at a glance, you know what they are. So we'll go ahead and exit out. Now, wizard mode, we have dynamic brightness, which is for when you're using a ASCOM controlled flat panel where you can control the brightness, your exposure time will remain constant and your flat panel brightness will adjust. Dynamic exposure, this is when you're using a light panel where you cannot control the brightness. In this case, we will achieve our desired ADU through exposure time. So your light panel is going to remain constant. Your exposure time is going to be adjusted in order to achieve your desired ADU. Sky flats. This is when you point your telescope at the early morning sky and you wrap your aperture with however many layers of white t-shirt that it takes to achieve the brightness that you're looking for. And then you dial in with exposure time. So this will work identical to dynamic exposure, only you're pointing your telescope at the morning sky and adjusting brightness with white t-shirts versus using a light panel. Slew to zenith, we can choose west side of pier or east side of pier. And then as we go through these menus, we will uh, learn what does what in here. I'm gonna be demonstrating dynamic exposure and dynamic brightness. We will not be demonstrating sky flats. Uh, we're gonna start with dynamic brightness and let's go ahead and slew to zenith. What this is gonna do is point our telescope straight up and down looking directly at Zenith and it's going to disable tracking. So our telescope stops moving and just stays pointing straight up and down at Zenith. This is so we can place our uh, light panel over the aperture and not worry about it falling off. And now that we're at Zenith, what we're gonna do here is go into equipment flat panel, and we're gonna go ahead and turn on our flat panel. And then what we're gonna do is hop back into Flat Wizard. And I'm gonna go ahead and put my flat panel over my aperture.
Now I'm gonna go ahead and go into equipment and I'm gonna to toggle my flat panel on. I'm gonna set a brightness. I'm gonna set it to 50%, hit set. And now what I'm gonna do is center my flat panel over my aperture. This is to ensure that I have even coverage over the primary mirror. Now that our flat panel is over the aperture and we're centered, what we're gonna do is go back into Flat Wizard and we have our filter. In this case, I'm gonna be imaging with the Hydrogen Alpha filter. My binning is one by one. And you can set your gain and offset. Uh, this can vary uh, between your light frames and flat frames. Personally, I like to keep them the same as my light frames. Um, now, if you see my series going over gain and offset, all of this is is to push your histogram right or left to help achieve basically different ADU. Um, being that we're gonna aim for a very specific ADU with flat frames, that's why this can vary between flat frames and light frames. Again, I just like to keep it the same. You can do either way that you feel is best for your data. We have a minimum flat panel brightness that we can set. We have a maximum flat panel brightness that we can set. Exposure time, and then your histogram mean target, and then the mean tolerance. So. Let's start with our minimum flat panel brightness. Let's go ahead and set this to 50. And then our maximum flat panel brightness is 100. Exposure time, this is important. I always recommend a handful of seconds. It is possible to run through all of your flat frames in 0.2 seconds. It is not good that can very uh, much so vary the temperature of your camera sensor. It can vary the brightness of your flat frames and it can very highly affect the effectiveness of your flat frames as far as calibration goes. Always choose a handful of seconds. It keeps the uh, flat frames more even with each other. It gives you a much better result as far as calibration goes. This is especially important when you're doing your dark flats. Your dark flats will vary in brightness. They will not properly calibrate your flat frames and it's, it's just a mess. It's best just to take the extra few minutes uh, to do your flat frames correctly. So always use a handful of seconds. I like to run my flat frames at 25,000 ADU. So I have my histogram mean target at 38%. This gives me 24,904. Now you can bump this to 39%. That gives you 25,559. You know, as long as you're within a few here, you're gonna be just fine. Uh, this is where our tolerance comes in, 10%. The flat wizard will accept an ADU anywhere from 24, uh, 24,000, I'm pretty sure this is trying to say 130. There's just not enough room here. Let's see if we can expand that out. There we go, 22,413 to 27,394. This is the range of ADU that the Flat Wizard will uh, accept based off of your target that you have set. In this case, 24,904. From here, all that we would do is hit play. And then you're gonna see the flat wizard adjusting the brightness of the flat panel. And what it's doing, it's taking its four second exposures 
And then we're going to see here that we are way blown out. This is the difference between the old version of Flat Wizard and the new version. And this is where some frustration can set in and where I'm going to show you a trick here. What it's going to do here is try different, as you can see here, different um, brightnesses with the flat panel. What we're missing is flat panel step size. How the Flat Wizard used to work and why I say it's not quite as user friendly. It would start at the minimum brightness that you have set, take an exposure, and then if needed, move the flat panel brightness up by your set step size. For example, if we had a minimum flat panel brightness of 50, like we do here, it would also ask us for a step size. If we put, say, two, it would start at 50, take its exposure. If it needed to, it would move it to 52 because we set a step size of two. Take an exposure, and if needed, move to 54, so on and so forth. And then if it couldn't find an acceptable um, panel brightness, it would bring up a window saying that it could not um, find the uh, um, find what you have set. We'll just leave it at that. Um, and then it would ask you to change a couple of parameters and then reset, and then it would start over. As you can see here, it's struggling to find a correct brightness on the flat panel. And it'll keep doing this until it finally gives up and then you'll get a little window that it failed. And then you have to kind of guess where you want to go. Now, this is the trick that I wanna show you because this right here, this is time. This is precious time under the stars. And here's that, that window I was talking about. So here's the trick that I want to show you, and I hope that this helps somebody. Let's go into imaging. And let's go into, actually, let's start with equipment. Let's go into flat panel. Let's set a flat panel brightness of 59. We'll hit set. I'm sure you just saw that my flat panel dimmed out a little bit. We're going to go into imaging. We're going to bring up statistics and we want to scroll up just make sure that your mean uh, value can show we have our four seconds selected and we're going to take a quick exposure and we're going to get a mean value here 21 4 23 let's go into equipment let's bump this to 60 we'll hit set take another exposure We're at 22, 518. Let's go into equipment. Let's bring this to 62, hit set. Let's go to image, take another exposure. Sixty-five thousand. So let's go into sixty-one percent. We'll take an exposure. Okay, so now we already know that 59% was very close. So we have 21,296. Let's bump our exposure time up to five seconds so we expose the sensor to the light a little bit longer. And we're at 26, 233. And that is within our acceptable range here. Exposure time, we had it at five. Panel brightness, minimum 59, maximum 59. Because that's what we're using here, along with our five second exposure, flat wizard, hit play. And what you're gonna see here is 
right away, we're taking our flat frames. And that was a lot quicker than letting Flat Wizard play around and jump all over the place. Now, that is the easiest way to get Flat Wizard to just go right away without jumping all over the place. This same trick will work in the older version of Flat Wizard. Even though not quite as necessary, it's a little bit more user friendly, it'll still work in the older version. Let's go ahead and stop this for a moment. Now, let's go ahead and explore dynamic exposure. What you'll notice is that flat panel brightness is now gone, and that's because this is used when you have a light source that is not controlled through Nina by means of ASCOM. This will be a tablet or any sort of light source that you're placing over your aperture in order to provide light to your camera sensor. So in cases like this, we're going to achieve our desired ADU by changing up the exposure time of our camera sensor to the light source. In other words, our light source is going to be the constant factor and our exposure time is going to be the variable factor versus with dynamic brightness where exposure time is the constant factor and our light source brightness is the variable factor. Now, what we're gonna do here is I don't have a light source that I can place over my aperture. I don't have a tablet big enough, unfortunately, so I'm gonna go ahead and just connect my light panel and I'm gonna turn it back on. For some reason, I have to choose a different um, brightness in order for the panel to actually come on. So I have this set at 59%. This is the same brightness that we used in the dynamic or dynamic brightness uh, demonstration. We're going to pretend that this number is constant. We cannot change this number. The light source that you see sitting over my aperture is not able to be adjusted. If we come back into Flat Wizard, flat panel brightness reappeared. That's because I have an ASCOM panel connected. Pretend this does not exist. So now we need to figure out how many seconds we need to expose our camera to the light source in order to achieve our uh, desired ADU. Now, we already know the answer with the hydrogen alpha filter. Let's go ahead and change this up a little bit. Let's go into filter wheel. Let's choose my S2 filter. And what we're gonna do here is we have our five seconds and we have our panel brightness. Let's go ahead and take an exposure. And now, as we can see, we're at 16,242. ADU, which falls outside of our allowed parameters. Now, being that our light source is not able to be adjusted, we have to adjust exposure time. We know that we have to bump our exposure time up. Since we're so low on ADU, let's jump up two seconds. Let's go to seven seconds. And we see that our mean value is 22,028. That's still a little bit low for my liking. I'm gonna bring this to eight seconds. And when you're running with a dynamic exposure, you may have to be a little bit more flexible with your allowed parameters. In this case, we're at 24,923, so that'll be acceptable. Let's go back into Flat Wizard. The reason I wanted to change up the filter is if you're using a filter wheel, notice how filters HA and within filter wheel under equipment, we're using our S2 filter. If you were to just click play, what's going to happen is it's going to fail. It's going to put the filter to HA instead of using your desired filter. So make sure if you're using a filter wheel 
under filter, you hit the drop down and choose your correct filter. So we know that our light source cannot be controlled and eight seconds exposure brought us to our desired ADU. So under minimum exposure, I'm gonna put eight. Under maximum, I'm gonna put eight. And all we're gonna do is hit play. Nina's gonna go ahead and take an exposure with your parameters that you set. And we already know that it's gonna work, so Flat Wizard immediately jumps into taking our flat frames because it met our desired ADU. Now, I'm gonna stop this really quick and I'm gonna lower my flats to take to two, my dark flats to take to two as well, because I wanna show you what happens once we're done with the flat frames. Uh, what'll happen is Nina will finish up the flat frames and bring up a little message stating to cover the scope to take the corresponding dark flats. And now that we're done with our flat frames, we're gonna see that little box pop up here. There we go. So then what I'm gonna do is remove my flat panel from the aperture, or if you're using a different light source, you remove your light source from the aperture, put on your dust cover, and then we'll hit okay. So let me go ahead and do that, and I'll be right back. And now that I have the dust cover on my aperture, I'll hit OK. And Nina will go ahead and take corresponding dark flats to match your flat frames that you just took. Now, there are some instances when using dynamic exposure where you cannot control the brightness of the light source that you're going to have to run your exposure times extremely fast. And for example, let me pull up a broadband filter here. And let's go into imaging. And we have, just to show you, we have everything set exactly the same as we did on our S2 filter. So eight seconds, our flat panel brightness is still 59. Um, now again, let's pretend that we cannot control the brightness of the light source. Let's run eight seconds with a broadband filter, my red filter. And what you're gonna see here is we are blown out. We went over the well capacity of the camera. If we drop this down to one second, we are now sitting over the well capacity still. So if we drop this to 0.5, now we're looking better, but we're still really bright. If we drop this to 0.2, Now we're sitting much, much better. But remember, we do not want to run extremely fast exposure times. So what do you do in a scenario like this? This will be exactly like your sky flats. You're going to have to take white t-shirts and layer them up over your aperture, between your aperture and your light source in order to dim out the light enough to be able to use a handful of seconds. Again, I recommend a handful of seconds to keep your flat frames even on the brightness as well as your dark flats because as your sensor heats up, your dark flats will change brightness, therefore not calibrating your flats correctly. And this is just gonna cause a lot of issues 
that you don't want to deal with. So I recommend a handful of seconds. And again, if you are in a scenario like this where your light source cannot be controlled and you're finding that you have to run very quick exposure times, layer up some white t-shirts to dim out the light source enough to be able to use a handful of seconds. So I hope that you found this useful. If you did, do me a favor. That channel icon that popped up, hit that channel icon and subscribe. I don't want you to miss out on any future content. Drop a comment in the comment section. What questions do you have? Did you learn anything new? And then check out that next video. Until the next time, clear skies.